Sounds like a plan. Hi, everybody. Kim Visioni with Century 21 Judge Fight Company. I am here on behalf of my community page. And I have today with us Mr. Eric from Wildlife on the Move. And he has a friend with him that he'd like us to meet. Yeah, thanks, Kim. Hello, everybody. Yep, yeah, I'm Eric Brittingham, otherwise known as Mr. B. And we are Wildlife on the Move. And this is Dude. No, he's not a Texas sized rat. He's actually an <laughs> opossum. Wow. Look at Dude. Hey, Dude, what's up? Yeah. He's just <laughs> hanging out with us, checking you out. That is so cool. Can you can he see? Can he see? Yeah, me? Oh yeah, he can see. Yeah, they don't have very good eyesight during the day since they're nocturnal, but uh, he right. can see us. Okay, cool deal. Cool deal. So, Mr. Eric, tell us about Wildlife on the Move. Awesome. Yeah, so Wildlife on the Move, we're a live animal outreach organization, a nonprofit organization, but uh, we've kind of made the pivot here lately to doing a lot of uh, video as well as live streaming. Uh, so we've become a virtual company as well. So now we're doing live shows as well as virtual shows. And so we uh, provide services for schools, daycares, libraries, festivals, churches, uh, birthday parties, events, corporate events, uh, television, you name it, we do it. So we uh, bring live animals to those shows or online to help people uh, overcome their fears and dispel myths about animals and then help these animal ambassadors because most of these animals that we have in our collection are discarded, rescued, or abandoned pets or wildlife. And so we take care of them and then utilize their abilities and all of their amazing adaptations to teach people out there so they can overcome those fears and get the right facts about them. How cool is this? And y'all are located in Arlington, but you don't actually have a place for people to come visit. Is that correct? Right. So we, we actually house our animals in Dallas at a camp called Ascend Camp and Retreat Center. So okay. people can go and visit that camp. However, our animals are in, you know, just a specialized critter compound that is not really accessible to the public unless we schedule something private and personal, which we can do. But uh, we're not really a come and go place. We like to go out to the public, whether it be through video or on site at different events and schools and things of that nature. So that's how that works for us. Awesome. Awesome. So what type of animals do you rescue besides this Mr. Dude here? <laughs> yeah, so we do have two opossums in our collection right now because their mom was uh, hit by a car, unfortunately, mm. and then they were attacked by vultures. And so that's why we have Dude and his sister, Lacey. Lacey's uh -huh. actually missing part of one ear and several toes because of those vultures. But we mostly uh, focus on snakes and reptiles. So we have lots of snakes in our collection, non-venomous ones, mostly pythons and boas and various native snakes to uh, Texas. And then we also have lizards, tortoises. Uh, we have cockroaches, tarantula, scorpions. And then we have a tenric and also a sugar glider. So a lot of variety in our collection, about 50 animals. And so it does take a lot of uh, time, energy and resources uh, to take care of those animals. And so that's why we're a nonprofit. We rely on doing those programs, but also the support of the public with donations. And, you know, we're always looking for partners to help us out as well as uh, endorsing their products and services or uh, having them donate to us to help these animals survive and uh, kind of tell their story. And let's hope we can get that word out for you today. Okay. That'd be great. Um, so tell us, how did you get started doing this? I mean, <laughs> this is incredible work that you're doing. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, well, it goes way back. Um, I've always was fascinated by animals growing up as a kid. Uh, my parents, believe it or not, I grew up in California and we, we had a farm. A lot of people don't think that Californians have farms, but okay. <laughs> I grew up on a farm and we had lots of different animals. So I was exposed to that at a young age. And then we would always take family trips around the country. And I was always fascinated about going to zoos, nature parks, you know, aquariums, uh, visiting all the national and state parks that I could. So that kind of got the bug going for science and animals and learning more about them. Uh, of course, I was always plugged into TV for me to all my house, Wild Kingdom. That was always a big thing. So, uh, you know, science and, and nature and, and working with kids has always been kind of a passion of mine. So I pursued that, got a degree from Stephen F. Austin State University in Life and Earth Science, taught school in the Mansfield School District at Cross Timbers Intermediate for a few years. Uh, we, we used to take our kids out for a week-long camp outside, and I thought, wow, if I could teach outdoors every day and uh, teach people about animals, that would be the dream job. 
So it turned into uh, finding a really cool position at River Legacy Living Science Center with the Arlington Independent School District. I was their liaison there for about five years. So we would bring kids, fourth graders, out to the, the park and do uh, trail hikes as well as a scavenger hunt and then an animal presentation. So that's kind of where I honed my skills and really found that animal presenting was my passion. And then from there, uh, the Dallas Zoo was building the Lacerte Family Children's Zoo and my business partner with Wildlife on the Move that uh, we developed later, which I'll get to here in a minute, Casey Rudy, he went from River Legacy over to Dallas Zoo and I kind of followed him over there. We started that Lacerte Family Children's Zoo education program. And then we said, you know, we ought to do this on our own. And so back in uh, 2005, we left the zoo and started Wildlife on the Move together, me and Casey Rudy. And uh, we've been going for 15 years, uh, serving schools, daycares, libraries, festivals, churches, you name it, we do it. So that's kind of what got me into it. I love it. I love everything that you're doing. And I've been, oh, you know, I'm from Connecticut originally and we have farms too. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. <laughs> little yeah, tiny gotta, state. We, yeah, yeah, but we got to get those uh, myths <laughs> dispelled, right? That there are farms right. and places that you might not think of. <laughs> That's correct. That is correct. And and we love the animals. And we, you know, I always, uh, it's funny because I have a couple of kittens out here that I've been taking care of. And it's so scary. You know, yeah. um, one of them has no legs. Oh, wow. Uh, like his back legs don't work. So, oh, he, wow. but he's so strong and he just goes and goes, you know. Yeah, it's amazing how they can along. overcome and adapt, right? Oh my goodness, it's just crazy. And I just watch him and I'm, I'm very careful because he got stuck behind the shed, so I had to get him out. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I'm glad you're taking good care of him. That's awesome. Yeah, well, uh, not good enough, unfortunately. I'm oh, always wow. afraid something's going to happen to them. No. Yeah, well, there, there definitely are a lot of uh, predators and, you know, mountains they have to climb out there, that's for sure. <laughs> correct, correct. So what are some things that uh, people don't know about the wildlife? About wildlife on the move or wildlife specifically? Both. Okay. Well, let's take, for example, this guy right here. Opossums get kind of a bad rap. People think they're, you know, disease carriers and right. carry rabies and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But this is one of our most resilient wild animals that we have in nature. This guy right here can actually eat ticks. That's one of his favorite foods is the parasite ticks. Mm -hmm. Now we gotta say thank you to opossums because they eat thousands of thank ticks you. in a year and that helps with keeping Lyme disease controlled. So, right. you know, we're talking a lot about disease and viruses right now, where right. our animals really help us out. Although it can also go the opposite way when we're talking about what happened with, you know, bats and eating those and things of that nature. But this guy, he eradicates ticks, but that's not all. He's also immune to the venom of venomous snakes. Oh, wow. So all the snakes that are in his range, nice yawn there, dude. Um, he actually can kill and eat venomous snakes and he's immune to their venom. So guess what? Scientists have been studying their blood since about 2015. And uh, they've been trying to synthesize that blood and turn it into anti-venom for people. Right. And it right. makes it a little bit cheaper and less expensive to produce and uh, have on hand. He's so, so cute. Yeah, he's pretty awesome. Um, so they're pretty resilient. They, they, they don't carry diseases and they don't pick up diseases. Um, they're pretty resilient to rabies. Uh, there's not too many diseases that we know that opossums can catch. The only thing that I've heard of is leptospirosis, and that's from eating dog feces because they will go after just about anything. But uh, not an animal you really need to fear about uh, contracting anything from. We actually need to keep them around because they're a great eradicator of a lot of pests and keeping some diseases controlled. And it's so funny. I heard that recently because we yeah. have some possum. <clears throat> I actually found a, a baby possum in my pool filter. Oh, yeah, <clears> I thought it was a rat. I thought it was a rat at first. Oh, yeah. And uh, my boyfriend said, oh, no, it's a possum. And, yeah. you know, my my friends are telling me, no, they're really good to have around. They keep snakes away and the rats away and the, Absolutely. the bugs and all that. And I was like, oh, OK, cool. And, and how did I not know this my whole entire <laughs> life? <laughs> well, I think a lot of it is, you know, we just get told things and we're not always told everything. And, and so those things kind of pass away and we're, we're not knowledgeable about it. So that's why we like, you know, giving those pieces of information and nuggets of truth about these animals so that we can kind of coexist with them. That because is so we, awesome. We really need to have all these animals around, even though, you know, like the next one I'm going to get out, people are so fearful of, uh, but it's just because we haven't been educated. So we always say go wild for reading, because the more you read, the more you know, the less you fear and definitely have a, a group like us come out to help you kind of learn the, 
the facts about him. So I'm going to let him go back to sleep. Okay. But, uh, Bye, dude. Guys, they sleep all day and come out at night. He's nocturnal. So they sleep like 12 to 18 hours a day. He's like wow. the ultimate teenager. So like my little dog. I mean, that's all he does is sleep. <laughs> but if you have more questions about this guy, just let me know. But I'm going to get out a different animal we can talk about a little bit about as we uh, go okay. on down the, the road here, too. <clears throat> Perfect. So, well, I kind of want to know, you know, we want to share a little bit more information about, you know, your goals and challenges for this next year coming up. I mean, I, obviously, I'm sure you've had some challenges with COVID not being able to be around everybody. <laughs> but like you said, you've overcome using video and still getting the word out and educating people. And I just think that's that's truly amazing. And there's Mr. Snake. And yeah, who's this so this guy? is, yeah, this is actually a jungle carpet python. This is from Australia. So not native to the United States, but uh, one of our rescued animals. So this guy, unfortunately, was burned by somebody. So talk about, you know, what makes a good pet? How do you take care of it? Uh, please don't burn animals or abuse them oh. just because you don't want them or don't know what to do, or they might have done something to harm you. Uh, you definitely want to take care of them. So this guy came to us as a rescued animal. Okay. Um, so, you know, this is an excellent animal. Talk about people getting over their fears, dispelling the myths about them. Things yeah. of that nature, because a lot of people <laughs> have a phobia, which is the fear of snakes. Yeah, so, no, I'm not a snake person. <laughs> my brother, actually, my brother used to live in Florida, and he was the go-to snake guy because he had, he owned a, a shop and he had rare reptiles and that kind of thing. And he, when somebody would find a snake in their yard or their toilet or whatever, he was the one they called to go and get them. That's awesome. And we'd go visit, and he had stacks and stacks and stacks in one room full of snakes. Snakes, and yeah. he'd like, you know, you can stay over. And we're like, no, it's okay. It's okay. Not <laughs> where we want to be. <laughs> no, I'm not staying here. Is so one missing? Because I'm sure there's one missing. <laughs> yeah, and that always can happen. These guys are yeah. amazing escape artists. Yes, but they yeah, are. Back, back to some of your questions about, you know, what we're doing during this time and our, our future plans. The yes. biggest thing of all is just, you know, as you can, if we can get together and do live presentations somewhere in the smaller groups, we're, we're up for that. Um, I have been doing some birthday parties live as well as virtual. So we have lots of capabilities and lots of flexibility, whether it be live in person with smaller groups, um, you know, socially distanced, things of that nature, or we can go online like we're doing today. We can do Zoom, we can do Skype, we can do Facebook Live. Um, I have some awesome things called video ventures, which is another thing that's really helped us out during this time where we uh, kind of pivoted and transitioned. So I took two of our normal shows and turned them into 40 to 46 minute videos. And one of them is called uh, Amazing Adaptations. So it talks about the adaptations of about five animals uh, from around the world. And each segment after each animal has a question and answer. So you get a question and you've got to figure out what the answer is and then it gives you the answer. So it's a great tool for schools, whether it be public, private, or homeschool, to utilize those during these times where you can't be together if you need to have some kind of enhancing, an enhancement for your science curriculum and something to use at home for learning, that's an awesome tool. The other one we did is called boas versus pythons. So it's kind of in a, in a sports theme and same concept where we show an animal from team boa and then give some questions and then the answers and then we show a, t a team member from python and do the same thing so that one's about 40 40 to 46 minutes long has all those questions and answers so that's another way that we've been trying to reach people and uh, teach uh during this new kind of world that we're in and all ages right all ages yeah all ages. Yeah, we, we kind of focus our 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 message to about fourth to fifth grade level and it tends to hit every age group by doing that um and i i'm always told that you know parents are learning just about as much if not more than the kids so we try to kind of yeah. focus it with you know humor as well as facts and a lot of good educational material and these awesome animals i mean you can't see these all the time in a lot of places and uh do the kind of experiences we do um like uh, we've done on these videos as well as in person. So it helps out a lot. Awesome. So what being in Arlington, right? You live in Arlington? Yes, I, I do live in Arlington. Okay. And what do you love most about it? Like, what do you love most about Arlington? Oh, 
Arlington. Well, the, the thing I love about Arlington is it's centrally located. That, that is what correct. I do, I can get to most <laughs> things in about an hour unless the traffic is crazy in the Metroplex, which we all know about. But lately, it's been pretty easy just with all that's going on. But uh, central location is great. The other thing I love about Arlington is we're kind of the entertainment capital of, of Texas, it seems like nowadays. And there's just so many things to do, so many places to go. Uh, so many great amenities here in Arlington, and you know I've been in the DFW area now for well over, going on almost 30 years. Um, so this has been my home and just the place that I've really enjoyed living, just because of all the amenities and all the improvements we're making as we uh, have been moving through the years here. I'm with you all the way. I've been here eight years, and I've lived in Arlington the entire time, ah. and I hardly ever leave it. I mean, unless I'm showing houses, of course. You know, I'm well, a realtor, so. I'm all over the Metroplex, but uh, for the most part, I stay in the area, you know, yeah. um, we, we support local, right? Absolutely. We try to support our community. And I love getting to know um, people and small businesses in the area. Yeah, really well, I'm glad we're getting this opportunity and thanks for uh, helping us do that. And we'll, we'll a absolutely return the favor. <laughs> absolutely. And what are some, what's something people don't know about you specifically? <laughs> yeah, that's always a, a great question. I've, I've had that a few times and a lot of people are shocked when I tell them. So I was kind of a band nerd growing up. <laughs> and so I, I started out in sixth grade playing trombone and uh, played played in the band from middle school all the way to college. Uh, so I was in the Lumberjack band at Stephen F. Austin. That was an awesome experience because I got to go to a lot of places, you know, on, on the university's dime and see a lot of the country that way. Yeah. So uh yeah, that's one thing that people don't know. And then they also don't know that I'm a huge 80s music fan. I'm really into right on. <laughs> 80s music. My wife gives me a hard time because she's moved on with the time. She likes a lot of new artists and things uh -huh. like that. And I'm not so into that stuff. I'm just kind of stuck in the old school ways, I guess. But I, I love my 80s music. You know, obviously sad that Eddie Van Halen just passed away. There's a guitar hero, of, of yep. course, of mine. But as a big Rush fan, um, grew up listening Huge to Rush. Huge Rush fan. Well, Love yeah, it. That's awesome. You don't have too many ladies <laughs> that like Rush, so that's awesome. Yeah, um, that was my Rush brother. Band. That was my brother's favorite band growing up. So you know, when you have a big brother and that's his favorite band, you kind of, yeah, you know, you kind of like to them it. too. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's kind of some of the things that people don't know about me. And then the other one I share a lot is I always tell people, hey, I went on tour of uh, seven European countries when I was a junior to senior in high school. And they're like, you were in a rock band? I'm like, no, <laughs> it, was a, it was a marching band. It was called Spirit of America, which was kind of cool because we got yeah. to represent the United States and Absolutely. travel around all those countries and uh, you know just celebrate uh, music as well as uh, reach people that didn't know a lot about American culture. It was kind of a cool thing. Thank you for sharing that with us. That is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> See, people that bet you a lot of people didn't know that about you. Yeah, that's a, that's for sure. Yep. So now my favorite question. All right. If a young person asks you what they should do or how they should live their life, what's the best advice you would give them? Yeah, I think in these times, you know, with all the technology and things we have, you know, people think that they can just get everything off the internet and we'll all be fine. We got spell check and all those kind of things, all this right. technological advancement. But I tell kids, you know, as, as I told you our slogan, go wild for reading. I think uh, literacy and reading is really important. So I tell kids, stay in school. I know it's hard to do. <laughs> I mean, we have a long haul when you're in school, but I tell them, stay in school all the way through high school. Definitely do that. And try to figure out along that way, what is it you want to do? You don't have to go to college. I mean, you can get a job without having to go to college. College obviously helps and advances you to other places. But it depends on what you want to do. So to be quite honest, I wish I would have had more experiences growing up to when me to go into college so that I could apply what I learned there, because I think I would have done a much better job. But uh, I kind of did it reverse or, or like the normal way of going to college and then coming out and doing all the experience with working. So I tell kids, definitely stay in school and volunteer at places, things that you're interested in. If you're interested in animals, find a vet. Even though you're going to be scooping and, and, and shoveling poop, I know that's nasty sounding, but it's part of the job. I still right. do it today. I've been doing this for 30 years. I right. have to shovel and clean things every day, even though I'm doing the shows, the glamorous part, you know. Right. So I think that's important. Volunteering at places, there building relationships with people, you know, getting to know people. 
people in industries that you're interested in and learning from them helps a great deal. Um, and then uh, being on time, uh, being consistent, uh, being positive, those are very important uh, characteristics to have. And then always give back. Is there, is there a way that you can do volunteering you know, once you have a job as well, give back and contribute right. to different things. So that's right. what I tell kids a lot of the time. It's so, it's so important, you know, um, I mean, I can't stress that enough. This is some, that is some great advice. Probably the best advice I've heard in a long time. Well, thanks. So thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. So when your life is over, how would you like to be remembered? Well, I just, I hope that uh, I'm remembered as somebody that's made an impact on humankind and animal kind. And uh, we've made an impact to help the environment because I kind of worry about us unraveling things because, you know, like we're talking about snakes, a lot of people have that feeling that all, all good snakes are dead snakes. Well, you can start taking these guys out of the ecosystem, the link in the chain of, of life, and it's going to impact all of us because not only do people think about these guys being animals that eat stuff, but they're also food for things too. So a lot of times we forget that connection that you know some animals rely on snakes, especially for food. So we start taking them out just because we don't like them or, oh, it's venomous. Well, yeah, they are, but you know, learn about them and respect them and keep your distance and stay safe. But remember that we're all kind of connected. So I hope I'm remembered you know, for making an impact, helping people get over those fears, uh, learning the facts about things so they don't have to fear them. And then on top of that, I, I definitely want to, you know, be known that, you know, I, I made an impact where, where those interactions were, you know, that I've helped kids learn and grow and uh, experience life and be kind of passionate exactly. themselves about something they want to do in their future. Absolutely. I love that. Absolutely love it. So you were talking earlier about, and just to get back to the videos that you made, and yes. you have a great website, wildlifeonthemove.com. And so are some of your videos, your educational videos on your website? Uh, not those particular ones, because those okay. are purchased in order to help us with animal care. Gotcha. So all of our programming that we do is actually a fee-based programming that helps okay. us pay for these animals Absolutely. and care for them. So okay. here's something to note, though. Uh, those are actually being discounted right now. So we have a discount here in October. That's actually our last chance to save spectacular discount special. So 15% off all of our programming other than Boas versus Pythons live and birthday parties. But you can get 15% off those videos if you do them individually. But here's what's really cool. If an organization or school or anybody out there books us for at least a live presentation or a live streaming presentation, I'll throw in those videos for $350. That's a $300 savings. So you can have two virtual videos that you get both of them for 350 bucks. They're usually three, 325 each. So you get them for 350, both of those. So you can have some virtual programming at school or at home uh, safe, you know, as we're doing a lot of that right now. And then you get a live show or a live streaming as well for additional cost of that, but it's all at 15% off. And the other cool thing about our promos is that promo code I give you is good for a whole year. So if you book now for any date between now and September 1 of 2021, we'll give you that 15% discount over and over and over. Okay. All right. Great. So Great. that's how that works. I hope that and they can get they can get those from your website, correct? Right. You can go to our website and you can see the programming that we offer. The video ventures are mentioned on there, and then okay. you just fill out a form at the end of our website, there's a contact us page and okay. you can send us your information and then we'll set that up. Or you can, uh, you know, email me at hiss at wildlifeonthemove.com or you can call me at 817-239-2345 and we can book you that way as well. If you have any questions, we're happy to answer that. We're also and I, will ha I will have everything uploaded on my uh, community page as well with cool. this interview. So they'll be able to go there and get all your contact info from there. Um, and for somebody who would like to just donate to help, is there, can they do that right from the website as well? They can. And, and you know, Facebook is a good uh, tool as well. So at okay. Wildlife on the Move is perfect or Instagram, Eric, uh, Wildlife on the Move. Um, yeah, uh, you can donate different ways. Uh, monetarily, we always love that. And that really helps us out a great deal. So go to paypal.me 
uh, slash wildlife on the move. That's one way to give. Uh, we have a charity GoFundMe page as well. So if you go to charity GoFundMe and just look up wildlife on the move, you can go that route. The other cool thing, if you're an Amazon shopper, if you go to Amazon Smile and then you select wildlife on the move, percentages of your purchase without any cost to you goes to wildlife on the move. So that's another way to do it. And then we also have charity lists. So if you don't want to give us money, I certainly understand that, but we would love it if you do. Uh, but you can actually donate supplies to us. In, okay. and do it that way. So we have a whole list of supplies that we could use um, that you just go on to our, our charity list on Amazon and they will even ship it straight to us. So you don't even have the hassle of having to ship it or you can ship it to us and I can give you that address. I think I've got it posted on a lot of our Facebook stuff. Right, and it will be on my community page as well. Awesome. Thank you for sharing and educating us today, Eric. So I am welcome. so thankful that we connected and you know, I look forward to a, a bright future for you and everything that you're doing to help these, these wonderful animals, even well, this little guy right here. <laughs> you as well, Kim. I really appreciate it. Thank y'all for going wild with us today. That's right. It's super fun. All right. We'll look forward to talking again soon. Take care. Y'all take care. Bye-bye now. Thank you.